Okay, I'd like to show you how you would set up the Modex content management system to enable friendly URLs. If you log into the administration manager tool, you've got some tabs here and you can choose to go to tools configuration and you get a tab down here about friendly URLs. If you choose to use them, you got some settings here, one of which is the suffix. Uh, that may be the most important because this affects exactly what you might type up in your browser uh, address bar. If you're retrofitting a site that is not being managed via a content management system, say for example it, it's got .php as its uh, suffix, you may want to emulate that in your uh, Modex install and you can do that using this suffix. We want to use friendly aliases, uh, friendly alias path. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Duplicate aliases, nah. Most of the other ones I'm pretty much going to leave alone. And when I do that, I should be able to type in a page's alias on the end of my URL. Now here's a fun one. I'm not really sure what this is all about, but I see this a lot. I don't know if it's a bug, but you get this really disheartening error that says, oh, fail to update setting value. I don't think that actually does anything horrible. I haven't seen any bad effects about that. So don't freak out. Uh, maybe it is something bad, but it's been happening to me for a while now and nothing that I've noticed has really affected anything. Okay, so that's what you do in Mode X. Now you've also got to edit your HT access file. So if you head over to your FTP client and you're looking in your website directory, and this is the root of my site, I've got this file that came with the install and they name it ht.access. But actually for Apache to parse that, it's got to be .htaccess. And once I do that, that page will be rendered. And what that does is it allows you to uh, configure some of the custom Apache things that uh, it's got built in. That may not make any sense to you, but just know that this actually has to run in order for the friendly URLs to work. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is a little test. Typing in some garbly gook at the front of the file. Why am I doing this? I want to make sure that this file is being parsed. If it's not being parsed, you can really spend a lot of time trying to fix these rules to work and end up with no results because if it's not being parsed, it's ignoring everything. So after I've made sure that that's parsed, I might open up a window here and type my website. And if I get this internal server error, what happened is, is it tried to parse the file and it cacked on all that junk I just typed right here. If you type in a bunch of junk at the front of the file and you don't get an error, that would be a clue that, hey, it's not actually parsing that file. If that happens to you, you may need to go into the Apache configuration file. This probably won't happen to you unless you're running your own web server. Some people are doing that. I've done that on some installs. And what you might end up doing is heading over to your web server and you would go to where Apache is installed, where it has its configuration files. And this is going to be different and different flavors of Linux or Unix or whatever you're using to host. But I would move over to that directory and I would edit the httpd conf file. And I'm looking for a line called allow override. And there are a couple lines in there. I'm looking for the one, the directive that's specifying the root directory, notated here with that little slash right there. And we're looking for this, allow override. If it is set to none, you're going to want to change it to all. Once you've done that, when you've typed your garbly gook up here, you should trigger this error. And again, that error is just a way for us to know whether or not that file parsed. If it does parse, you get the error. Good. Go back to your file here and delete the garbly gook. And you're going to uncomment a couple lines down here. And the lines you may uncomment is uh, there's some sections up here about using your website's name with or without the www. So uncomment these lines here if you don't want www to be what it points to. Or if you do want www, your domain name, I'm going to uncomment these three lines and change the actual name here. 
Okay, after you've uncommented this and edited the domain name in your HT Access file, you should be able to go back to your browser and hit your URL. Type in your domain name and see if it brings up the page. If it doesn't, if you get some error, I'm going to simulate this error here by misspelling my domain name. I'm going to screw up something here. And when I try to refresh, if you get something like this, oh, oh, it can't open the page. It's possible you made a typo in your HT Access file. Uh, if that thought really freaks you out, you may want to back up the default file that was given to you on the install. Or if you're really in a bind, you may go download uh, the install package again and, and try to start from scratch. But just watch your spelling in here because this stuff does matter. As long as it's spelled correctly, when I load it, you'll see the modex. Uh, this is just the default install. Okay, so what? Now, to test this, I might go back to the manager and I might edit a file that has an alias. So here's a, one of the built-in files here. Document alias. Features. That should apply directly to the URL. So if I go back to my browser window and type in features.html, boom, it's bringing up a page. Okay, that's the page for features. If it doesn't do that, you may need to double check things like did you set the suffix correctly if I type in PHP it might look for oh it's a 404 it's not expecting that because back in the manager under configuration I have as my SEO suffix dot HTML if I change that to PHP and saved it and then try to find this page again Oh, there it is. See that? It didn't get the 404 error. That's just kind of subtle. So as long as you're in agreement here, and again, don't worry about this failed to update value error. I think it's just there to destroy your confidence. Um, we'll figure that out later. But I'm just going to make sure this is HTML because that's, in fact, what I want. And just to verify, I'm going to hit up another page. HTML. Does it load? It did. I'll do it once more. Let's find another page here. Um, getting help. I'm going to edit this document just so we can have a look at it. And there's the alias. Oh, interesting. Misspelled, perhaps. I'm going to call it uh, getting underscore help and save it. And then over here, I should be able to navigate to that by typing in getting underscore help.html and see if that page loads up. And indeed it does. So I did this correctly. Yes, I hope that helped. So just to remind you, you're editing the HT Access file, and in rare circumstances, you may be actually going into your Apache server, if you have access to that, and updating the directive for allow override. Hope that helps you guys.